Lungelang bond trial has been a very large prospective randomized placebo-controlled phase three trial investigating the combination of docetaxel and entidanib compared to docetaxel and placebo in more than 1,200 patients with pretreated advanced non-small cell lung cancer. The primary endpoint of Lumelang Bonn has been progression-free survival assessed by independent central radiological review and secondary endpoints consisted of overall survival response, tolerability and quality of life. As the key result, we have seen a significant improvement in progression-free survival independent from histology in favor of the combination of nantidanib and docetaxel. Looking on the secondary endpoints, we have seen also a significant improvement in overall survival in patients with advanced adenocarcinoma. Furthermore, we have got the very interesting result that there has been a pronounced efficacy of this combination in patients with fast progressing adenocarcinoma and in refractory patients who never responded to first-line chemotherapy. With regard of tolerability, predominantly we have seen the toxicity associated with docetaxel and the characteristic adverse events of nantidanib have been GI effects like diarrhea or a transient elevation of liver enzymes. Looking on the characteristic AEs uh, caused by the antiangiogenic nature of the compound, we haven't seen any relevant increase in bleeding events or any relevant increase in severe hypertension events. So overall, this is a new option that we have for pretreated patients with advanced adenocarcinoma. The therapeutic decision-making for patients in the second-line setting when combining nintedinib with docetaxel comes from analysis from the LUM1 study. Here, subset analysis has demonstrated that the greatest benefit seems to be in the population of patients progressing within nine months of starting first-line therapy, where the survival advantage is associated with a hazard ratio of about 0.7. And that group of patients, one would certainly want to consider the combination of nintedinib and docetaxel because that is the group with the biggest survival benefit. A large survival advantage is also seen in patients who have progression as their best response to first-line chemotherapy, and that can be up to 30% of patients we treat in real life. So really for that group of patients, that seems to represent an ideal population of patients with whom to combine nintedinib with docetaxel. Even though there is an effect in all uh, adenocarcinoma patients with these compounds, it's clear that this effect is bigger in patients who have a shorter interval. And it's, it's illustrating something about the tumor biology. It's also something that we, uh, that we haven't previously, I think, paid too much attention to. But it is important when we try to figure out the right treatment that we look at the individual patient history and try to find out, is this like a short interval or is it a longer interval? That would with the information that we have now be important in terms of selection of the right uh, drug. The exact cutoff, what is a short interval and what's a longer interval, is difficult because this is a continuum and we frequently talk about nine months between the start of first and start of second line therapy, not because nine months is a particularly important time point, but rather because that's be below nine months is where we see the biggest effect of the nintedinib and that's been at least partly replicated in the study of remosiramab. In, in both the study of remosiromab and the study of nintedinib, we did see that patients who had a shorter interval appeared to have a bigger effect of the treatment. So probably these two drugs both uh, are sort of better for patients with a short interval. But a particular finding in the, uh, in the nintedinib study was that patients who progressed on first-line treatment, so they, they are patients with a particularly aggressive tumor biology, actually responded very well to an nintedinib treatment. And that exact finding was not replicated in the REVEL trial that looked at remosiromab. So even though it appears that there are differences, these two drugs are not totally identical. Nantidanib has shown its efficacy in pretreated patients with adenocarcinoma. Currently, it is explored in several indications. For thoracic tumors, we have seen quite interesting data also in patients with advanced pleural mesothelioma. So we have a positive sign in a randomized phase two trial 
This is now going to be confirmed in a randomized phase three trial. We are also working on this issue of tolerability. So we are performing a phase one trial, exploring the efficacy of weekly docetaxel in combination with nantidine in order to improve the tolerability by maintaining the efficacy of this combination. And from my personal perspective, I would be very excited to see a trial combining nantidanib with an immune therapy because we have seen that VEGF or angiogenesis is a very strong immunosuppressive factor. And to use an anti-angiogenic compound and an checkpoint inhibitor really might increase the efficacy of the immune therapy.